All right, y'all, welcome to the Coming Arms channel. Okay, today we're doing another gun review, and today we are checking out the HK SP5. Very iconic weapon, at least it's, it's based on a very iconic weapon, and again, being made by the same manufacturer, it is very iconic in and of itself. So the SP5 is basically the semi-automatic version of the MP5. I think it's basically the best thing that you can get um, to, you know, actually, if you wanna have a build that's similar to the MP5, that's the best sort of firearm model you can go off of. It's also the second to last iteration that they did. They did like an SP5K and more recently they did the SP5 with like a 16 inch barrel. Um, really, really weird choice. I'm not exactly sure why they did that one. Uh, maybe I'm missing something and if, and if so, definitely let me know. But that was, yeah, that was a weird choice for sure. But the SP5, I gotta say, it is an amazing firearm um, made by HK. You can kind of expect the quality is absolutely going to be there. And again, it's it's basically the MP5. It's a semi-automatic MP5, um, just very, very iconic. And it's still in use today. It was developed, I think, in 1963. I think it was actually like produced in 1964. Um, and then from there, you know, people are still using it today, like 60 years later, which is pretty incredible. There's not many firearms that are that iconic, um, especially like a, something like this, like a submachine gun, already has like a very niche role, but in like the counterterrorism realm, the sort of CQB realm, the MP5 is just iconic. It's definitely made a name for itself, which I can absolutely understand um, having owned this SP5 for about six to eight months. Um, I've put about uh, maybe 1,500 rounds through this SP5. Um, so again, still not too much. You can see I've done a pretty decent amount of modifications to it. Um, and it is SBR'd, so I have the actual stock on it, which looks a lot better than that, that brace, I gotta say. Um, but yeah, I do have some very strong opinions of it, and they're pretty much pretty much all good. Um, and you kind of understand what you're getting when you get an HK MP5 variant. Um, and I kind of go over all of that, but we will go over kind of um, the manufacturer. So Heckler and Cook, we'll go over that. And then we'll talk a little bit more about the SP5 itself, kind of what its intended uses are, what it excels at, um, and also just the general performance and then the build quality and things you can do with this thing, which the MP5, again, it has been around so long and it is very iconic. There's a lot of aftermarket parts. There's a lot you can do with it. And of course, there's a big clone market as well. So, you know, if people aren't necessarily making stuff for the MP5, you know, you can still just take it from any of those other clones and throw it onto this bad boy. Now, Heckler & Koch, if you're getting an H&K, you know it's going to be very high quality, a lot of quality control going into it, a lot of precision, um, and a lot of care and attention goes into HK, which why you'll see a bunch of memes when it comes to H&K firearms about them not being for the pores and stuff. Um, yeah, they are usually pretty expensive weapons. Again, there are a lot of you know quality control, a lot of care and attention, a lot of design development going into these weapons. And again, they have made a name for themselves, so they kind of have the reputation to back the price tag that they do have. Um, so a lot of people will opt to just get an H and K like MP5 clone or a clone of any other you know HK firearm, which you know totally fine. Those are very high quality as well. Um, but again, you are paying for that name, for that reputation, for that quality, um, which is kind of what I opted for as well. Now, my history with the MP5, of course, everybody has their sort of vision of the MP5. I think I have the most exposure to the MP5 early on from like Call of Duty 4. Tango down. Hallway, clear. Using that thing was a lot of fun. That and like the P90, that's kind of where I got hooked on those specific firearms. And then moving more into Airsoft, my brother had a, a few Airsoft MP5s. Bruh. And those are always really cool to handle, especially the ones with like the, the full stock like we have here. Um, so that's kind of how I got my initial hands on. Again, just some of the, the function with these things, like the HK slap, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. It's just, it's a really, really fun firearm. And it's just, again, it's got that name. You will see it all over the place. So everybody kind of knows the MP5 and you know kind of wants to get their hands on as well. Now, again, I have had this for about six, seven months and I've put a decent amount of rounds through it and through like a few different, I guess, environmental conditions. Um, in rain, um, I've shot it in snow. I've shot it just again, like in the mountains. I've shot it inside. Um, 
yeah, I, I've, do, I've done a lot with the MP5 and it just, it ran flawlessly the entire time. So kind of talking about the reliability and accuracy a little bit, it is a very, very reliable weapon. And that's why a big reason why a lot of people love it. It's also extremely accurate. I was kind of surprised. I mean, you can easily hit like a 12 inch target at 50, 75 yards without even trying. Um, pushing this thing to about 100 yards, you kind of start to feel that you are shooting a nine millimeter weapon, you know, and how long it actually takes to travel and also kind of how you need to aim. But again, it's extremely, extremely accurate um, compared to anything of its size and again, caliber. Um, yeah, it's it's at the top of the, the accuracy that I've seen in any of those firearms. Even compared to something like the P90, which has a five, seven round, this thing shoots just as dead on. Um, and, and again, as long as you understand what the weapon system is supposed to be used for, you're not going to have any issues with that. And again, with reliability, shooting in all those different types of environmental considerations, shooting it in more of like a CQB role and also just like sort of static shooting, it was fine, no issues there whatsoever. Um, and again, as long as you kind of understand the manual of arms with the MP5, you can get pretty fast with this thing. Uh, of course, things to consider with the MP5, kind of talking about the general controls as they relate to other firearms, you do kind of understand how old of a firearm it is because you lack some of those controls, some of those like creature comforts when it comes to being able to operate it as fast as other weapons, mostly with like reloads. So for example, with the reloads, you can either just take the magazine out, um, put a new magazine in and then rack it. Or of course you can opt to do the HK slap, get a new magazine in and then slap the charging handle, which is usually what I, I go for. Cause I think it's a little bit easier to insert the magazine that way, especially if you have a full magazine. Uh, and again, since I'm going to be manipulating the magazine paddle release anyway, I'm going to be messing with the charging handle as well while it's right there. It makes it a little bit easier to actually get that magazine in, slap it and immediately present. Uh, but as opposed to like an AR where you can kind of drop the magazine, doesn't really happen so much with the MP5. Again, it is like a curved magazine. You can get some of the straight magazines, but it's not as reliable to drop the magazine out. Uh, but it does. it is nice to have that option as well. Even with my big hands though, I still feel it's a bit of a reach and you kind of have to really throw off your grip to kind of really get to that release uh, and actually manipulate it effectively. And again, for most people, even like myself, I don't think it's worth it because if I'm trying to bring this thing to my workspace, a lot of times the magazine just gets stuck. So there are some things you need to work past as far as it just being an older firearm and having some controls like that. But once you do, again, it's just going to work um, flawlessly for you. Now talking about the build quality, it's an HK, very, very sturdy, very well done. Um, this came with just like an end cap here. So it was basically just this with a sling mount. Um, and again, I did SBR it. So now I have the full stock on it. You can get like the, um, well, you could get the SB tactical brace before the uh, really stupid ATF rule. So that's what I had on it initially. Um, and then I kind of opted for an actual HK stock very high quality if you guys plan on getting that as well. Um, lower receiver, again, fine. The selective switch is just very, very pleasant to manipulate. I mean, you definitely understand if you're putting this sucker on safe or not. And again, it is ambidextrous and it's got a lot of sort of surface area. So you can't really mess that up too much. And it's even got ridges kind of like knurling on the top. So it's even a little bit more uh, positive of a purchase especially if you're, you know, you know, you're not rocking gloves or what have you, or if you have sweaty fingers. Now, as far as your magazine releases, those work very fine. Um, not like a whole lot of extra friction to them. Um, yeah, they're very smooth. Powder release, very, very smooth. And again, the magazine, yeah, it will kind of get stuck sometimes, but that's not because of the mechanism itself. It's just because, again, you have a curved magazine and depending on the angle, of course, if you kind of tilt it this way, yeah, it's gonna drop a little bit easier, but yeah, it's just, as far as the quality, no issue there. The magazines themselves, um, they're pretty good. Um, they feed fine. I haven't had any issues with feeding. They're very, very sturdy, like just very solid um, construction. Um, if you're trying to get any other ones, they are pretty pricey. Normally it's like 70 to $80-ish 
to get an HK magazine. Now I have noticed that with the other magazines that I purchased, I'm not sure if they're just older, like they have a different coating or what have you, but they had a little bit of not, it, it might've been like the early stages of rust. I didn't want to try and test it. So I CLP'd it uh, really well. I brushed it just to make sure. And it seems like they're holding out okay. But uh, yeah, if you're gonna get any other magazines, I would recommend honestly just looking at some of the clone magazines because they seem like they work pretty fine and you're gonna be saving a lot uh, on just that, especially if you're gonna be dropping them or chucking them like I do. Yeah, you're kind of, you're, I think you're gonna be fine just getting a clone MP5 magazine. A lot of people, if they get an HK, then they don't really want to get any other brands of that accessory if HK makes that. Like with the rail mount, um, sights, anything like that, if HK makes it, they would prefer to get that over anything else. For me, I'm not too bothered by it. I did get more HK magazines, but I'm telling you, I think you'll be fine kind of just going with something else. But the one that came with it, it seems like it's holding out a little bit better. So maybe it's just got a different coating. Um, very, very smooth operation when it comes to the charging handle and the bolt assembly. Haven't had any issues with that. It's kind of like getting stuck out of battery. Yeah, it just, um, you don't have to worry about that really at all. Charging handle, very, very sturdy. I feel very confident HK slapping this and I don't think it's gonna break. Um, yeah, and that's kind of how they recommend you do it as well. So yeah, you can do that to your heart's content. And you definitely should, because it's just a lot of fun. The receiver, solid material, good welds all around. Rear sights, um, yeah, very sturdy. Doctor sights, um, very positive clicks. Yeah, you can yeah, have utter confidence in this rear sight doing what it's supposed to. Same with the front sights. Uh, you know, you got your steel post. I think it's steel, but it's, it, it's a metal. Um, the hood is fine. Uh, as far as anything else, the flash hider, everything is fine. It does come with a threaded barrel. If you do want to throw a suppressor on that way, if you're not trying to opt for like a, like a tri-lug suppressor, you do have that option. I do notice that the um, thread protector gets loose and that's pretty common with any sort of thread protector, um, especially depending on the caliber, but it's just something to keep in mind. Um, I don't, I haven't seen it get like that loose to the point where I think I'm gonna shoot it off or anything. It's never gotten that far but it, it is something that gets loose sometimes and that's pretty much it. So quality, no issue whatsoever. Now, as far as its ability to accept aftermarket parts, again, it is the original HK. So people are absolutely going to make parts that fit, fit the HK uh, and that's kind of what they're gonna base it on. You know, you, you have companies like Zenith and, and what have you, and you can kind of usually use that pretty interchangeably. But again, everything is going to be made to make sure to fit for the actual HK. So again, stock, this is an actual HK German stock. So very, very sturdy. Uh, again, there's plenty of stock options. If you go to hkparts.net, plenty of options out there. You can even get a Magpul stock. You can get a Magpul lower receiver, which pretty decent pricing. It is Magpul, so there's that. And that's got a slightly different selector switch. Um, triggers, I haven't seen so much, but I mean, I don't think you really need to switch that out, to be honest. Paddle release, again, I, I'm sure there are aftermarket parts for that. Really not something I felt I needed to switch out either. As far as the rail mounts, there's a few different options. Some a little bit more reputable than others. Um, and, and it is a very kind of unique system because it basically just clamps onto these um, protrusions that you have on the actual receiver itself and then it kind of tightens itself and it works fine. I mean, I have maintained a zero, no issues whatsoever. You do have the HK option. I think that'll probably run you like 300, 350. Uh, I got the MFI, which works totally fine. Again, I shot it a bunch and I haven't had any issues with the zero, but I'll be honest, like you can just run iron sights on this thing and you'll be like, you'll be pretty well off, especially in like a CQB setting. You have the diopter sight, so you can kind of switch that around. And again, like the MP5 is very well made. It just points very, very naturally with the big hooded front sights and the optional like wide diopter opening. Yeah, you can point this thing super nice, super quick in a CQB setting and you'll be fine. Even pushing out to like 50 yards, no issues whatsoever. But again, it is nice to have those options to have the rail mounts 
and then you can throw stuff like this, like the uh, the EOTech, which works very very nice and also just looks really cool. Uh, hand guards, you have a bunch of different hand guard options. I have the uh, Magpul hand guard on it. So I do need to get like a foregrip actually for that as well. Um, and that's pretty inexpensive. I think I paid like 40 bucks for the hand guard itself. You have the standard HK front end or hand guard, which pretty much looks like that. And that works really well. Again, it points very well when you're actually utilizing that. You have uh, more like aluminum models. You know, if you want to put like a peck, it'll be a little bit better for maintaining zero. You have the Surefire kind of like undermounted flashlight ones, which I'm really thinking about getting now because I'm pretty much only using a flashlight on this right now. Um, and I don't know if I'm even gonna put a foregrip on it, but those are, are pretty solid and they've been updated throughout the years. So the flashlight itself can be pretty modern as well. And then as far as mounting a sling, you can see um, I have the Blue Force loops on the front end, and then I have just this Magpul sling and it's connected to the stock right there. So as far as connecting, a sling, depending on what stock option you have, is kind of dependent on what kind of sling you can mount or how you can mount it. But as far as the front end, you do have that option over there on the left. If you're a left-handed shooter and you're trying to feed it on the right, um, I'm sure there is an option, I just don't know. I'm not sure if you can switch this loop around to the other side, but again, you can probably throw something on the handguard or even if you have a rail, you can throw it up there as well. But yeah, I'm sure there's stuff out there. It's the MP5. There's a lot of things that people make for that. So we've talked about accuracy. We've talked about the reliability. No issues with either of those. Quality control, very solid on the HK. Again, you are paying a pretty decent amount. I think I paid about 3,200 for the base um, pistol and then another 200 for the tax stamp to make it the SBR and then, you know, however much for accessories. So it is definitely uh, pretty pricey. You do have the options for the clones, but again, we're kind of talking about just the HK here uh, and I can't really vouch for the other ones. I'm sure like the Zeniths and Centuries. Um, yeah, I think those are fine. You're probably not gonna have many issues, many differences with those. But again, we're kind of talking about just the, the HK here. Um, so we talked about the reliability, the accuracy, no issues with that. Build quality is very solid. We talked about some of the nuances, again, with like how this compares to other firearms. But in general, again, I've used short ARs, I've used P90s, um, I've shot BNTs, shorter AKs. Um, each one has like their own kind of weird nuances, especially like usually the AK platforms. Each one has their kind of weird nuances that make it a little bit less convenient for certain things, but also more convenient for other things. Like this thing, just the recoil is pretty much like non-existent. It is the smoothest shooting gun I think I have. Even with like the P90, which also has like no recoil, that feels like a little bit punchier. This thing is just like the entire cycle of operation is like almost one fluid motion. And again, I think it's a little bit easier to kind of say that because the trigger is very, very nice on the actual HK MP5. And I'll kind of show you that right here. So, okay, so it's pretty much a wall right away. It's got a little bit of creep and then it breaks, super smooth break, like the nicest, double action pull ever like because usually double action pulls feel like a little bit better than like single action um, and just how smooth it is and then with the resets resets right there and then a nice again it's just very smooth not like necessarily the lightest trigger um, not necessarily like the least amount of creep but it's very negligible especially for how smooth the trigger actually feels so shooting this thing fast is pretty freaking easy it's almost effortless again with how smooth the cycle of operations is like it, it's just it just stays on target and you don't really need even need to try that hard shooting this thing one-handed it's very easy like you don't really get fatigued at all by the recoil it's just a very very smooth gun and pretty much talking to anybody that has fired this when you know when you've gone to the range they always comment on how smooth of, of a gun it feels just in the trigger, in the recoiling and getting it back on target. And again, just 
how it actually feels. Like you don't really hear or feel any mechanical twinges or anything. Um, yeah, it's just, it's really nice weapon. And I kind of talked about how natural it is to actually point the weapon, but like even with things like bullpups can be a little bit weird if you haven't used bullpup, but generally bullpups are pretty easy to kind of get on target because all the center of mass is like back here. So you're kind of moving lighter weight up here. So it's usually pretty easy to actually kind of like punch it on target, get it on targets. And this thing, again, is just the easiest to get on target. I'm not sure why, but just everything, the ergonomics, just everything works really well. The even again, the standard handguard just feels natural and how it's angled. It just allows you to punch it and get it on target very quickly. The big front sights again, makes it very easy, very natural. So compared to other things, any AR that I fired, any AK, my P90 for sure, this thing just points um, way better. So in like a CQB environment, this is probably like, if not the best firearm that I've found in like a CQB setting, you know, when you talk about like the pistol caliber or like non-rifle calibers, this thing just functions the best and I'd probably feel the most comfortable taking this in a CQB setting. P90, cool, works well. Again, very low recoil, but it doesn't feel as natural. It doesn't point as natural as the MP5 does. And with ARs, again, you have other things to consider with, you know, even just how loud they are inside, how much smoke they cause, how much more they recoil, especially in certain like awkward positions. Like with this thing, honestly, you could be standing on one foot, kind of leaning sideways around a corner and you'll still be able to shoot pretty well like that. Uh, wouldn't recommend it. But again, just talking about how smooth and natural this thing is to kind of move around. Very lightweight, you're not feeling that either. Um, yeah, it just works great in that environment. So kind of closing comments, again, you are paying a lot, uh, but it is HK, they do have the reputation, they have the history, they have the quality control, um, and they have pretty solid social media uh, management as well, I gotta say that. So their social media is pretty fantastic, especially the, um, I think it was the old HK, uh, some chick who is managing the HK profile, she would always talk shit on the Marines, which is really, really funny because like Marines will even be able to break the HK products, which is pretty impressive. Like the M27s when we got that. Yeah, I don't know. Marines found a way. Even the, the 320, Marines found a way to just break stuff. Uh, and that's kind of funny how it manifested onto their social media. So they're doing their marketing very well which they don't really need to, because again, the product kind of the products kind of speak for themselves. Um, but I gotta say, you are paying a little bit more, definitely, definitely worth it if you do have that extra money to spend on the actual HK. Uh, again, you can kind of modify this, even if certain things don't fit kind of what you're trying to use it for, you can modify it very easily and fit that role. This is more designed for like a CQB home defense setup with the light and the pressure pad. Um, and again, just the EOTech uh, works pretty nice. Even with the full stock, it's a very short package, very easy to kind of bring around corners. So yeah, definitely a pistol worth SBRing, that is for sure. So yeah, you are going to be paying a little bit more, but I would recommend the HK specifically with how accurate it is, how reliable it is, how well made it is. It's just a very, very high quality product. And there are very few firearms that are as iconic as the MP5. So, I mean, you bring this thing anywhere and everybody would be like, oh wow, he's got an MP5. It, that is an MP5 right there. Um, I mean, you can do that with a Zenith for sure, like it's an MP5. Um, but again, just having like an MP5 platform is again, just kind of nice. It's kind of cool. It's like a piece of history, even though it's not necessarily if you do have one that's not made by H and K, um, it's still the, the firearm itself, the design itself is very, very iconic. The roller delayed blowback operating system, um, again, very kind of unique. And it's not really something you see in many other firearms um, at all. So yeah, uh, I, I really can't say a whole lot of bad stuff about this. Again, sometimes you do kind of feel that it is an older firearm, but as an HK MP5, it does what you need it to do as long as you understand what you're supposed to be using it for. I'm not trying to snipe anybody with this or trying to go into like the mountains of Afghanistan trying to be really that effective with this thing. Um, as long as you kind of respect that, this thing is going to work wonders and you're gonna be pleasantly surprised and you're going, you're just gonna be, you know, happy shooting this thing on the range. It's just, it's smooth, 
it's very high quality and it does what you need it to. So as far as a review, yeah, there's really not a whole lot of bad stuff I can say about this. If you're thinking about getting it, definitely go ahead and do it. You're not going to be disappointed. And again, you can kind of adjust certain things here and there, or you can just leave it at it as is, because yeah, um, it's very solid that way. I even got this HK22 MP5. I think this is a Umarex kind of collab, if you will. Um, and this is just, again, kind of fun to have the MP5 platform just with how well it feels and how well it works, just in a package that's a little bit you know, more convenient when it comes to shooting and purchasing ammo for. But yeah, having the actual nine mil MP5 is definitely where it's at. If you guys can get that, and if that's what you're thinking about getting. So yeah, as far as my review, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I, I don't know what you expected. It's an HK MP5 basically, um, it, just semi-automatic. Yeah, really not a whole lot of complaints you will see online about this thing. Nothing that I've seen as far as anything that made me concerned uh, or regret purchasing it. It's nothing like that at all. Um, quite the contrary. Every time I shoot it, I'm more and more happy that I purchased it, to be honest. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If there's any questions you have specifically about it, if I breezed over anything a little bit too quick, let me know. Ask those questions down in the comments section. Um, and again, I'll try and throw up videos here and there of me shooting the MP5. Um, just, you know, so you can kind of see how smooth and cool the MP5 is. <laughs> but yeah, that is it for this video. I will see y'all in the next one.